Thank you so much, my brothers and sisters in Karengata. It's my pleasure to be with you again in this come meeting 2020. You have become my friends over time and I want just to appreciate so much that you once again thought that I should come and share with you in this camp meeting, particularly on this section, this program on prophecy. I want to invite all of you and pray that the good Lord blesses you. Let's say a prayer. Father in heaven, bless us during this camp meeting. We pray that as we congregate to thank you for what you have done in the last one year, that you bless us even this week and the many weeks to come. Our prayer is, may your kingdom come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, friends, uh, when we talk about uh, prophecy, and particularly in this section that deals with prophecy, normally our concern is normally end of time events. End of time events. Otherwise, when we speak prophecy in the widest sense of the word, then uh, we may not even exhaust it for this time and it may not meet the expectations of what people have in mind. Because prophecy generally is when a message from God is delivered and it is not always necessarily a message about the end of time. And you need to know that prophets spoke because God sent them to speak. And prophecy, my brothers and sisters, does not have to do with the prediction. Because many of us think that when we speak prophecy, we are speaking of predicting. So that when we think of a prophet, we are thinking of somebody who predicts the future. That there will be an earthquake next week. That something very bad will happen tomorrow. That something good will happen. That is more of divination. It's not prophecy. A prophet is somebody who has been sent to speak on behalf of God. Not to perform miracles, but to speak on behalf of God. And that's very critical. And so when we talk about prophecy at this particular juncture, we need to understand that our concern now, our big concern now, our concern is end of time prophecy. So what do we mean? We mean that we are interested in what God says about the end of time. Because we feel that we are moving towards the end of time. This world is running out of time. We want to know what does God say about the end of time. That is our concern. That is what is critical to us today. And that's what we are going to focus on. And we are going to look at different things every day during this camp meeting. And I want to invite you to this program. And let me tell you what you can always do. This is the greatest time we can share the gospel in the simplest way. Long ago, you had to write notes and then understand it, then go and share with the neighbor that we were taught in church. And you try to explain, you even forget what the pastor said. These days, once you have this video, you can always forward it to somebody else. You can even sit, discuss, you pause, you say, hey, what did the pastor say? Rewind. Then you go back, listen again. Then you forward. You can go ahead. You can go backwards. If there is a time we need to share the gospel in this manner, the time is now. You can't just listen and walk away. You need to listen, share, and make sure that the word has reached out there. Uh, the message I want to share with you, my brothers and sisters, is titled, We Need Finishing Power. We Need Finishing Power. You know, I would have given it an old title, but it sometimes old titles come with their tired baggage. So let's call it, We Need Finishing Power. And by the time we get to the end, you will understand what we are talking about and you will appreciate. Now, what is finishing power? Where I stay at the University of Eastern Africa, Baraton, we live in a community of people who are international marathoners. They run long races. And when you begin a race, there are so many of you as the race begins. But as you move on, the majority get tired and remain behind. And there is a small group of people who maintain the same pace. 
but as they move towards the end, there is a point where the marathoners reach and they can see that the end is right there. They can see the finish line. They can see the mark showing that that's where the end is. And since there are five of you or three of you, the only difference that will be needed now is whoever will rush to that finish line will be the winner. And what you need at that time is finishing power. Where all of a sudden, somebody who was running at a steady pace increases their pace and they dash towards the finish line. We need finishing power. Listen, my brothers and sisters, without finishing power, we may not make it to the finish line. We may see the finish line, but we may fail to get the finish to the finish line. We need finishing power. You know that Moses was taken up the mountain and he was shown the finish line and he was told that that's the promised land. But because of some trouble in the past, you will not get there. But God is gracious. He gave him something better. I just came to tell you, my friends, during this prophecy lesson, that if there is anything we need, we need finishing power. If we were in regular church at our church there, we would have said, turn to your neighbor and tell them we need finishing power. But we are not sure who you are with as you are listening. But if you are with somebody, turn to the person and say, we need finishing power. We need finishing power. Finishing power is important if we are to win. Finishing power is important so that what we had started and what we had sustained all along can be completed in a climax that is desired. We need finishing power. You see, friends, for those of you who don't know, when you begin a race, you need starting power. You need to start with the power so that you separate yourself from the crowd of those who came to try. But you also need sustaining power after you have gone for a while and where you came from is far and where you are going is still far, you need sustaining power. But when you see the finish line, my brothers and sisters, you need finishing power. You see, brothers and sisters, when we read Daniel chapter 8 verse 14, the Bible tells us something, and this is a prophecy that is very significant to us as Seventh-day Adventists. Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, and it says, And he said unto me, Unto 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. And we believe this prophecy has been fulfilled. That Daniel was told it will take 2,300 days and nights and the sanctuary shall be cleansed. And the sanctuary that was being talked about here is not the earthly sanctuary that is in Jerusalem, but the heavenly sanctuary. And the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary implies the end of the world as we know it. And Daniel was told that to count these 2,300 days, which are translated as years in prophecy. They are translated as years in prophecy because prophetically one day is equal to one year. When was the counting? The counting was to begin the moment a declaration is given to rebuild Jerusalem after the Babylonian captivity. And that was in 457 B.C. And so when you count 2,300 years, you come up to 1844, where Adventists at that time, and Adventists are not these Adventists, but the people at that time who believed that Jesus is coming soon, believed that the world is coming to end in October 1844. The world did not end, but the prophecy of 2,300 years came to an end. So what is important? that when that prophecy came to an end, the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary began. And the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary means we are in the last phase of the sanctuary business. And after that phase is done anytime, 
Jesus, our high priest, will leave the most holy place. And when he comes out, he will no longer be coming out as a priest who is pleading for your forgiveness and my forgiveness. He will be coming out as the king of kings and as the lord of lords to come and conquer he, this world and win his people and destroy the wicked. And that's why as Seventh-day Adventists, we are very serious about this prophecy. We say that from 1844, we are living in the times of the end. Our understanding that we are living in the time of the end is not triggered by COVID-19. No, we have always been conscious that the end is here. COVID-19 or no COVID-19. Because the end of time is already predicted in the Bible and we know that after fulfillment of this prophecy of Daniel 8.14, we are living in a time where any day now we will be going home. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, if it is true, therefore, what we believe as Seventh-day Adventists, that we are seeing the finish line. And somebody may be asking, but, but, but why, Pastor? But why? How comes, how comes uh, if, if since 1844, I mean, is, is God this slow? Can't, can't he just end this world? Listen to what the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Why is it that since 1844 up to today, 2020, the world has not ended? Why? 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is not slow. God is waiting for you. God is waiting for me to come to repentance so that we don't get lost. Otherwise, the business will have been done in 1844 or 1845 or 1863 when this church, Seventh-day Adventists, began. But God is waiting for you. So if you think God is delaying, it is you who is delaying because God is waiting for you. God is waiting for me to change our ways. God has looked at us. We are church members, but we are not fully ready for the second coming of Jesus. We are still hating each other. We still look at each other from the tribal eye, from the racial eye. We are still looking at each other suspiciously and we are not ready since 1844 the finish line is there but our behavior our pace is not like people who have seen the finish line and that means that in our faith we have slowed down and that's why the message today says we need finishing power we need finishing power because the way we are progressing is not right we need finishing power my brothers and sisters, the Lord is waiting for you to change your immoral ways. Because since you moved to the city, you are living with somebody who is not your spouse. And the people back at home don't know that that is the life you are living. But the Lord knows and he's waiting for you. He is not slow in keeping his promise. Because if he ended the world today... Even with you are listening to a religious message right now, you will still be lost because there are things you have not rectified. The Lord is not slow. My brothers and sisters, we are in a spiritual race. We are in a spiritual race to get ready for heaven because any time from now, we will be going home. Any time from 1844, we are living at critical time of the history of this world. God is not waiting for persecution to come. God is not waiting for Sunday law to come. God is waiting for you and me to be ready. And so it is, it is completely crazy when God is waiting for you to be ready and you are busy studying the internet whether Sunday law is coming. God is waiting for one thing, you are waiting for another thing. God is not slow. He is waiting for you to be ready for his second coming. 
He is waiting for you to stop lying. You have been a perennial liar. Anytime a phone call rings, you lie about your location. You lie about what you are doing. God is waiting for you. God looks at our commitment. And we are not committed sometimes. Camp offering requires promotion, promotion, promotion. We are not ready. We are not ready. And he is waiting for us. But unfortunately, you know, he will not wait forever. Listen, my brothers and sisters. If there is anything we need now is our readiness. And that's why the message is we need finishing power. We need finishing power. You see, we are in a spiritual race. And the race has two sides. The first side is that we are on a race to get ready for heaven. And on the second side, we are on a race to win souls for Christ. And if we, need, we are in a race, we, we need starting power. And we started with the power of the Holy Spirit. We need sustaining power. And God has sustained us. But now that the finish line can be seen, we need finishing power. As we need move to the finishing line, we need finishing power. Joel, chapter 2, verse 23. Joel, chapter 2, verse 23. The Bible says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause you, he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Listen, my brothers and sisters, the message today actually is concerned about the latter rain. We would have actually just started this message by saying, our message today in prophecy is the latter rain. What is the latter rain? But sometimes, you know, you have to give it a flavor so that we get a clearer understanding. Listen, my brothers and sisters, the latter rain is the finishing power. When a crop is planted, it needs the former rain that will cause it to germinate. But as the plant is growing, it may need regular rain for it to grow. But for it to mature for harvest, for it to mature for harvest, it will require the latter rain. The latter rain gives it finishing power. The latter rain gives it finishing power. And so when we say we need finishing power, we are talking about our need for the latter rain. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3. In Hosea chapter 6 verse 3, I hope you're also opening as I open mine. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3, the Bible says, Then we shall, shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain into the earth. The Bible says that the latter rain, the former rain, is the Lord himself. So when we say we need finishing power, when we say we need the latter rain, we are not asking for actual drops of rain from the sky. We are asking for the Lord himself to come and empower us so that we can finally be ready for heaven, so that we can win souls for God. This is the finishing power that we need. We need finishing power. We need finishing power. Listen, my brothers and sisters, the latter rain is the finishing power that we need. It enables the crop to mature for harvest. The Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, is the latter rain in the life of Christians. God the Holy Spirit is the finishing power that you need to complete your rest of faith as we move towards the kingdom of God. As it becomes clearer every day that the finish line of our spiritual race is here. As it becomes clearer every day that the finish line for this world is on sight. We need finishing power. And the finishing power we need is the Holy Spirit in your life and in my life. We need finishing power. 
Listen, brothers and sisters, in Pentecost, during Pentecost, that's when we had the former rain, the first rain for planting the church. Jesus had just left a church and he said, hey, church people, go and wait until when the rain comes. And they waited in the upper room. And when the rain of the Holy Spirit came, they spoke in tongues and Peter preached. And immediately there were 3,000 people converted. That's what happens when God comes into your life. And now as we look at the end, and now as it becomes clear that the end is on sight, listen, my brothers and sisters, we need the latter rain. And the latter rain is the Holy Spirit. And that latter rain is the finishing power. We need finishing power. You need finishing power. I need finishing power. Listen, my brothers and sisters. You see, the world can end in many ways. We are waiting when God will end this world. But it is possible I can get so sick. And when I look at the state of my health, I may not make it in the next one year. I may not make it in the next two years or in the next three years. We need finishing power. At that moment, when you look at yourself, you say, mm, if this is the situation I am in, I need to be ready to complete my spiritual rest. And that's where you pray and say, God, give me the Holy Spirit as I end my race, so that this race will end properly. As Apostle Paul says, that I have fought the fight, I have finished the race. We need finishing power to finish our race. Apostle Paul was sure that he will be beheaded the following day. And he writes a letter to Timothy. He says, I fought a good fight. I finished the race. I'm ready. That was a sign of somebody who was finishing power. He is not afraid of his head being cut off because he has finishing power. We need finishing power, my brothers and sisters. God the Holy Spirit is the finishing power. God the Holy Spirit is the latter rain. You see, when the church started in Pentecost, when the reign of the Holy Spirit came, two things happened. Souls were won and faith became strong that people could withstand persecution. They could withstand persecution. A few of them being killed, James was beheaded. Several of them thrown in prison, but the church continued. Do you know why? They had the Holy Spirit. Not just because they were vegetarians. Not because they were taking a lot of water in the morning, but they, they had the Holy Spirit. Those other things are important, but have the Holy Spirit above all else. And listen, my friends, if we are to win souls, we need the Holy Spirit. If we are to win souls, we need the Holy Spirit. If we are to win souls, we need the Holy Spirit. You see, brothers and sisters, if we are to stand persecution that is coming, that has become the subject of so many people, which should not be the subject, Christ should be the subject, because Christ will enable us to withstand the persecution. But if we are to withstand the persecution that is of big concern to some people, we need the Holy Spirit. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, you can be experiencing death like the great men and women tied to stakes and they are burning. And what are they doing? They are not crying in pain, but singing praises to God. That is only possible when you are finishing power from the Holy Spirit. We need finishing power. Another man was being stoned. His name Stephen. And what is he saying as he's being stoned? He's not explaining how painful the other rock was that he cracked his head. He's saying, I can see the heavens open. And I can see the throne of God. And I can see Jesus on the right hand of God. That is what happens when you are finishing power. That's what happens when you are finishing power. I just came to tell you, friends, that we need finishing power. We need finishing power. The world is coming to an end. We can see the finish line. We need finishing power. The finishing power is the latter rain. The finishing power is the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit started us off in our faith. The Holy Spirit is sustaining us. But with the end in sight, we need finishing power. The end is soon to come. And suddenly to come, we need finishing power. Signs are getting fulfilled. We need finishing power. Let me tell you, friends. Jesus told a story in Matthew chapter 25 from verse 1 to 13 about ten virgins. Half of them, five of them were wise and the other half five were foolish. What was the foolishness is that the fools did not have finishing power. 
they all went to wait for the bridegroom and they had lamps that needed oil. But the wise ones carried extra oil because you need finishing power. The Holy Spirit, the oil. But the fools started very well. And we have all started very well. We are all in church. We are all listening to this sermon and we, to this presentation on prophecy. And we are all happy. But will you finish? Or when the critical time comes, you will discover that you don't have the Holy Spirit. That when the critical time comes, you will discover, mm, I wish I had carried some oil. Listen, friends, I just came to declare in the name of Jesus, let's not be fools. Who, when the bridegroom arrives, that's when we say, oh, what do I do now? What do I do now? Listen, we need finishing power now. We need finishing power. The fools did not have finishing power. The wise had the finishing power. We need finishing power. So how do we get the finishing power? Allow me to wind it up this way. Number one, you have to be very prayerful. You have to be very prayerful. Praying and fasting. Praying and fasting. Not praying and fasting so that people can know that you are praying and fasting. You must begin in secret personal prayer that is consistent and habitual. Praying consistently without anyone knowing so that the prayer is really about you. That is number one. Praying and fasting so that you can get closer to God. The second thing that you need to do is to engage in Bible study. Engage in Bible study. Study the Bible. Study the Bible. Study the Bible. Not because you want to go and preach to other people. Study the Bible. Not because you want to answer somebody's question. Study the Bible for your own good. Study the Bible for your own spiritual growth. Study the Bible. Very, very important. Prayer and fasting, studying the Bible, is critical for us to receive the letter rain, to receive the finishing power. I just came to tell you, friends, during this camp meeting as we begin, is that we, we need finishing power. We need finishing power. Did you hear what I said? We need finishing power. And so I have a question for you. Do you need finishing power? Do you need finishing power? If you need finishing power, I'm going to ask you to join me in prayer. Father in heaven, I need finishing power because the end is clearly in sight. I need finishing power in my personal life. And we need finishing power as a church so that we can preach again and many get converted as it was in Pentecost. Give us finishing power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We welcome you to the next prophecy program and we pray that enjoy the come meeting, have the best of times. And if there are any questions, you can always direct to us and we will respond to those questions. May the good Lord bless you and enjoy the come meeting 2020. Karengata.